Okay, I just wanted to uh, remind you, I'm Lisa Myers. I am the director of Fellowship Kids at Fellowship Community Church. And I am here this morning to have a spiritual parenting conversation with Sean Ebersol. Many of you may know Sean. Um, Sean is married to Harold Ebersol, and the, the two of them together have been serving as missionaries in Bangladesh for about 30 years. Um, Sean is the mother of two grown up young adult boys, both married now, Caleb and Luke, and four grandchildren. Is yes. that right, too? Okay. Yep. Um, Harold and Sean have been home from Bangladesh for the last couple of years as Harold has been battling cancer, and that has been a journey in itself for them. And if you talk to them, you'll hear lots of amazing things that God has been doing during that time. Um, uh, Sean has, with, in Bangladesh, I guess she's worked with a children's literature division, done a lot of translating children's books into um, Bangla. Is that the right language? Bangla? Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. And works with a missionary house, publishing house there to just do a lot of, of good literature for, for children. So it's exciting for us to uh, talk this morning. Um, you'll find out pretty quickly that uh, Sean has a passion for two things, God and children. And so today we're going to talk about what it means and how important it is just to encourage children to be others focused and not always self-centered. We all need this discussion, right? But let's talk a little bit about how that plays out in our families. So um, Sean, it doesn't take very long to listen to you. And as we've conversed over the many years we've known each other, um, to hear how your, the passion, your passion for God really just bubbles out of you. So my first question is, how does that happen? in us as parents, and how does that overflow into our kids? What does that look like? Okay, I'm glad I get to talk to you all about this. Um, it is a very exciting privilege to be able to think through these things, and it's great to get to team up with Lisa. I am, for this special occasion, wearing my, can you see it, Fellowship Kids shirt. You got <laughs> so it's good to get to teach some of your kids and get to know you all in the process. But yes, um, life with God is all about relationship. And he's the one that's initiated it. And he does the most amazing things in our lives. Um, he chose us and he called us for his purpose and he saved us. And I got it down some of, just some of the things that came immediately to mind and thinking through all that he does in pouring his love into us. He forgives us. He is working to make us beautiful like Jesus is. He keeps his promises. He protects us. He provides for us. He loves us always. He sings over us. He speaks to us. He comforts us. He refreshes us. He teaches teaches us, counsels us, walks with us in our days, wants to live with us forever, and nothing can separate us from his love. So we can watch for him in our days, knowing that he's right with us right now, right where we are. And it's much better than a hide and seek game with our children because he doesn't hide. He wants us to seek him and he wants us to find him in our days so we can gaze on his beauty and thank him and live a life of gratitude and contentment and joy. That's his desire for us in knowing him and enjoying him forever. So it is all about him um, and he's with us. That's right. In this whole process. So that's for us first as adults, right? I mean, we, mm -hmm. we live in that truth and in that journey with Christ every day. And mm -hmm. as we do, that shouldn't be separated from our kids. Um, in other words, we, we live together in family community. And so our mm -hmm. kids should not only see that in us, but how do they begin to experience it? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, um, it's a challenge for us and for our children because the delight of having Jesus be our focus and our joy in our day is opposite from what our society is encouraging to be the focus. Um, in fact, on all the advertisements and everything we see, we are told to love ourselves most. Right. And you get, you get phrases and articles and so, so many types of things come up that we can learn more about self-worth and self-fulfillment and self-protection and self-exaltation. And there's just so much out there available that we could be learning about. And we, and it's telling us that we should be teaching our children to think, I deserve the best. I know my rights. And unfortunately, the sad result of I, I, I mm. is anger or bitterness and brokenness. Hmm. We want the best for our children. 
So that's not where it is. The best for our children is Jesus. So in our days to have the joy of pointing them to him mm -hmm. and talking about him wherever we are and whatever we're doing, will give them that joy and protection and relationship that we long for for them. So we're encouraging them to, to not be me-centered, but right. first be God-centered, to see Christ in everything and in every day. And then how does that spill out to how, how do we then get them to move on to notice the needs of all those people around us? So we're moving first out of ourselves to God and then out to our neighbors. How does that work? Yeah. Well, actually, Lisa, your word was awesome. You said, how does it spill out? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of a verse in um, Psalm 23 where it says, my cup overflows. Mm. And there are books about our love cup, right? <laughs> that everybody has a love cup. And we need people to fill it up. Well, it just so happens Jesus fills all of our love cups to overflowing. And um, it's even when somebody is filling up our cup with juice or something, and it's getting really full, and we say, that's enough, that's enough. And he keeps that right on pouring so it does overflow. That's what he does. So loving others is not a must-do. You need to love other people. It's just the natural response because he loves us so much. Mm. So we can't help it. There is even a Bible verse that John wrote. And he said, we love because he first loved us. So it's the natural overflow. Mm -hmm. If in your home you have a baby or even maybe pets, your children are learning to think of others rather than themselves. Like, let's feed our cat. Let's, oh, the baby's crying. Let's find a toy that would make her happy. Or let's find a where did where'd his pacifier go? Let's see what we can get to give him just what he needs. So our children are hearing and seeing others and learning to hear and do something about it. So they're growing and having initiative by thinking of other people's needs. So every day it's good to have the question asked, who can I love today? Mm. And I actually, in our conversations, we can talk about the people around us. I'm not talking about gossiping. I'm talking about noticing our community helpers and being grateful for them. Wow, what a nice helper. She just had the car stopped so the children could walk across the road safely. Isn't that wonderful? Or the people that are loading up our bags at the grocery store. What a nice helper they are. They brought the bags out to the car. Isn't that awesome? Mm. Let's thank God for the fire truck. I hear the fire truck going by. Let's thank God for that and pray for the people that they're going to help. Mm. We can be having them think of others through the day. When we're playing with someone else afterwards, we can say, how are they doing? Mm -hmm. Did you see anybody sick? Did somebody fall down? Did you help them? You know, is somebody lonely or hurt? And we can discuss how, how we can meet needs. Right, right. So um, how does it benefit children to think, begin to think like this? What is the benefit? Or, or yeah, I guess that's my question. What is the benefit to them to begin to, to, to move away from thinking about self and Again, first God and then others. Okay. Um, actually, I'll talk about a couple of real quick things here. Yeah. Um, just like you might want your children to learn a foreign language. Mm. Uh, there were some books written a while ago called The Love Languages. Yeah. And we can be teaching our children the foreign languages that are the love languages. Mm. Their language of love might be quality time, but we can help them learn different ways to show love to others. For example, words of affirmation. Could they jot a text to somebody or a note or write a card? How about physical touch? These days we're not supposed, we're supposed to be socially distant, but could we text a little um, emoji of a hug? Or could we bump somebody's elbow and have our kids learn to do that too? What about giving and receiving gifts? If they're making a fun arts and crafts project at home, could they give it to somebody? Could they draw a beautiful picture that somebody would, that would be the recipient of? Or what about quality time? Could we meet up with somebody that's feeling lonely and maybe have a picnic? Or meet them and go for a walk in the park together? Acts of service, maybe after a, a strong rain where lots of branches fall, could we go to a neighbor's and pick up the sticks in their yard as a special surprise? Mm -hmm. So look for things we could be doing. I used to call it the kindness club of mm -hmm. uh, special weekly projects that we would do. We might make cookies and take half of them to our neighbors. Or for writing practice, we would write a special note to grandma. Or we would have 
our bananas are getting soft, so let's make some banana bread and we can take it to the police station as a special surprise. Or on May Day, pick some pretty flowers from our garden and let's sneak over to our neighbors, ring the doorbell and run away really fast. They'll have a, a bouquet waiting when they open the door. So little surprises like that, that we can make it a great joy for them to be looking for needs and doing something about it. And how does that help them? Actually, it benefits them when, as they are knowing Christ more, having a relationship with him, as they have accepted Christ into their lives, Christ in us is the hope of glory. And that glory is kindness and joy and love. So when I see initiative or I see love or kindness in my child's life, I'm seeing Jesus at work in them, and I can speak to it. I can say, wow, you had a great idea there. Jesus just gave you that idea. Let's do it, of reaching out and helping somebody else. We can thank God for his work in our children's life. He yeah. gave us the promise, he who began a good work in us will see it through to completion. That includes filling us to overflowing with his love and kindness. It's all him, and that just gives us more reasons to praise him. Mm -hmm. I love what you, the suggestions you made that you call the kindness club. They're very practical things. And I can see how that would benefit the child and the family because you're actively finding ways to love and care for other people. And it's also benefiting the person that you just shared something with, right? So mm -hmm. again, and I, I love the other, one other thing you said about um, asking almost daily, who can we love today? Um, I think we forget that. We ask, what can we do today? And that's not a bad question. But how can we love today is a much different question. Um, so again, we're talking about spiritual parenting, leading our, our kids all every day, not just Sunday, right? But every day, leading them into how to know the Lord and how to express our faith through love to other people. Um, and how we're doing it as we learn to do it alongside our kids will learn to do it as well. That's what we desire for them. Yeah, yeah we do. All right, anything else? I know we ran through a lot of stuff really fast here. Um, <clears throat> anything nope. else that you can think of right now? <laughs> ask, God to, ask God to show you what he's doing. Ask God to show your children so that they can grow in noticing needs it's so amazing to me that when jesus was on earth he made a point of noticing outsiders mm. or those that people pushed aside um, he went up and touched lepers he was a friend of sinners he was the one that talked to the lonely woman at the well that is who he is and christ in us will overflow with this kind of love mm -hmm. it's him yeah it is Thank you, Sean. Thank you for spending time with us today and talking about just what it looks like to let God's love overflow and be outward focused, right? Instead of what we usually do, focusing on ourselves. Love being with you. Yeah. God bless you. you. Have a great kindness club today. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.